Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed and today we're going to do another little handheld radio. I've had a lot of views and lots of comments on this little Bofang T1 here of radio that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I would follow it up with another video. So cheers, tune in, welcome to Fred in the Shed. So this little uh, Bofang, this little T1, little radio, um, did do a review on this a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, and lots of people shown a lot of interest, lots of comments. And that's partly due as well to Lewis from Ringway Manchester. Now, that Lewis's uh, YouTube channel absolutely packed with reviews on all of these Bofang and other handhelds, including the more modern internet type, Zello type radios as well. So I'm gonna leave a little card on the end of this video to uh, Lewis's video. So if you've not checked out his YouTube channel, I suggest you do so. I've been subscribed to it for years. Anyway, Lewis left a little, was very kind, he left a little link to my video at the end of his video. And uh, quite, yeah, quite a few people from Lewis's channel have come over to Fred in the Shed one. And uh, yeah, if you asked a few questions. So cheers, thank you very much. You're more than welcome on Fred in the Shed one. I normally do. CB, sideband and net videos, but I'm getting more into these little uh, little handhelds. So you're more, more than welcome over here. So what are we gonna do today? Well, after the review that I did of this tiny little Bofeng one and including the testing, I had quite a few people come back to me, you know, and sort of say, well, I'm just kind of starting out. I would like to get one of these little uh, PMR type radios. Um, you know, would you recommend this radio as my first radio, bearing in mind that they're very, very cheap. And like I said on the uh, on the first video, the answer to that is probably not. If you're gonna start out, if you've got no little handheld radios at all that you wanna use on a 446 band, then get yourself a UV5R. Um, you know, it, to, in my opinion, the build quality, the functions, the, the, the range that you get on one of these, it is the best buy by quite, by quite some margin. But people did also come back to me and sort of say, well, you know, well, that's all very well, but the UV5i is pretty much twice the price of the little T, T1 here. So what if I don't want to spend that much? So what I did, I thought about that, and I thought, well, these were currently at the time when I did it, these were about sort of 15 to 16 pounds UK delivered with the all important USB uh, programming cable bearing in mind it uses a different cable to all the rest of the uh, Bofong range, which is a little bit odd. And I did explain that on the first video. So I thought I would do another comparison. So I, I looked around at a radio that you could get pretty much for the same price. And I came up with this one. This is the, uh, the Bofong, the Treble 8 S Plus. Very nice looking radio. And I ordered this one in to uh, compare these side by side. But unfortunately, I had a few issues with this radio and uh, I was going to send it back and that's very rare for me to want to send a radio back so I dismissed that and then I decided we'd look at getting another radio in so I went for the more basic the treble eight the both things this radio has been out for a long time and also another important factor is that this radio it's just in the price is just in free fall at the moment you know, unbelievable. Um, it's already about two or three pounds cheaper UK than when I did the first video. And uh, I believe that Lewis has actually found it on eBay China for less than seven pounds. And Jez also at a ham fair saw these on, on sale at 10 pounds. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? So to be honest, this has become a little bit more expensive than that. So with the, the, the treble eight radio, it's about the same price. I mean, these have been out a long time. These are ridiculously cheap. We are talking uh, UK price. I think I paid about £11 delivered with the uh, standard Kenwood type Bofung programming cable, which of course, you know, with all of these radios, you do need to get the programming cable. Someone did ask on the last video, can I uh, just use this radio straight out of the box? Uh, on PMR? The answer is no. These, these do not come programmed with the correct PMR frequencies. In fact, they seem to have a random uh, program built into the, uh, into the radio and if you start using those frequencies you might find you'll get yourself in a little bit of trouble because that might interfere with ham and emergency sort of services. So you will need to program these radios yourself. Um, with this one for example, 
I use Chirp. Chirp is a free programming uh, software. I downloaded it and I was able to program this radio and this radio and it would do the UV5R as well. So yeah, you have to sort of do a little bit of uh, programming. I'm not gonna get too involved in going through all of the details on the uh, T1 because I did that on the last video and I will link that at the end of this video. So if you want the full rundown on this one, uh, go and watch that video. But I will be going through some of the functions and features, not that there's that many on the, uh, the treble eight. The plus here, the treble eight plus, I will do a separate video on that. I, and I'll, I'll explain the reasons why I'm not particularly happy with that uh, radio. Maybe I will compare the plus with the standard treble eight. And we will have a look to see if, is, is this radio worth the extra money over the standard triple eight, but that will be another video for another time. So, uh, right, okay, let's get started on this one. On the previous video, we discussed how this radio is so incredibly small, it's its most attractive feature. I mean, it's almost like a child's toy, you can just hold it in the palm of your hand, it's quite stealth. No one really would know that you were carrying it around, and it does fit very nicely into a shirt pocket. The LCD display is quite large and it's perfectly readable, it is backlit for use at night. And uh, yeah, but it's kind of a little bit irrelevant because you have to program this radio via PC. There's no way you can do it on the radio itself. But if you want to use the built-in FM broadcast band radio, yeah, I suppose it's sort of there for quite useful. Now, one thing I didn't like about the radio was the volume control. It's a double press and it's incredibly loud for such a small radio. I couldn't really get it down sort of low enough. And I would have preferred an analog sort of tuning wheel like you get on the sort of UV5R and other Bofung radios. I think they maybe it's kind of slipped up a little bit there. And it does feature the obligatory Bofang flashlight that seems to be on all the other radios. So yeah, overall, as I said, I did a full review on the last video, but we quite liked it and it didn't do too bad on the range tests either. The Bofung AAAS has been around for quite some time. Now this is a single band UHF 400 to 470 megahertz radio. It runs on a 3.7 1500 mAh battery and it should last about 10 hours on a full charge. And do you know what? This radio feels pretty good in the hand. It's not particularly heavy, just 150 grams. It does not feel like a 10 pound radio. All the sort of buttons and switches feel quite nice. No display, of course. You just have two knobs on top. You have a proper volume control with a switch on and off. And the second is a 16 click position knob, which allows you to access all of the PC program channels. And it has an additional feature that if you activate this via the software, when you switch it around to channel number 16, the radio will go into a scan mode and it will scan all of your program channels. If you want to know what channel you're on, well, that's easy because the radio talks to you. Just listen to this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no fancy features on this radio, like a built-in uh, FM broadcast band. But overall, it's a nice feeling radio. I just am amazed they can produce it so cheaply. However, I think the best feature of this radio is that it's not got a fixed antenna. It's got a small mini SMA female socket, which means you can fit an aftermarket larger antenna. Now, I've got this Nagola NA771. In fact, this is a clone antenna. It's not the original one. The originals cost about £12. You can buy these as little as 99 pence now on eBay and they do work. So when you fit the larger antenna to the radio, this should, and I might test this on another video, but this should increase the range much further than the standard small antenna. Now, finally, when comparing these radios, we have to talk about transmit power. The Bofeng B1 has a quoted output of just one watt. The AAS, this is not quite so clear. Some websites claim five watts, others claim three watts, but I've seen it tested on the internet and really it comes out at just two watts. So you can say it's twice the power of the little T1. And of course the antenna is a lot longer. So in the real world, in real world testing, that should increase its range, but is that gonna be the case? So that's what I need to do now. I need to go out and do some more testing. So for this testing, we're going to try and keep it uniform. So I'm going to use the same setup as before. I'm going to be using the UV5R as a base radio to receive on. Uh, probably going to use just on the PMR frequencies, of course. So we know from previous testing that this has no trouble at the short range of about sort of 200 meters or so. So we're going to start a testing at about a 400 meter mark. 
and then I'll sort of walk out a little bit, a uh, little bit further, and we'll just sort of see what difference it makes. Now, bearing in mind, I'm in a you know a built-up area. Um, manufacturers claim that you're only going to get between one and a half and two kilometres out of these radios in a suburban built-up kind of area. Uh, you know, you will see other testing on YouTube. Uh, you'll see someone with these radios. They'll be going out uh, in the countryside and they'll be transmitting back normally to a home base with a large home base antenna and they can get three, four, you know, five miles. If you take these up onto high ground, of course, out in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's amazing what you can get on these. But in a built up area, they do not work all that well, I have to say that. So this is going to be a real life testing between radio to radio, something like you would get when you buy these, if you bought a pair of these and you're using them at home. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. I'll set this up upstairs and then the next bit of video I'll, uh, I'll be outside. At least it's not raining today. And we'll do the, uh, do the testing part. Right, so here we are. Approximately about the same distance we was before. Just under the 400 metres, we think. And uh, yeah, well, last time the T1 worked. So just going to give it a test now. On channel 2 on the PMR, we'll start with a T1 and see what that sounds like. Okay, audio test, audio test on the Bofang T1. At about the 400 meter mark, 400 meters. So audio, one, two, one, two, audio, 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 one, two, audio. So now test on that uh, 400 metre mark just under with the uh, Bofang Treble AS longer antenna of course and a advertised 3 watts, we reckon it's about 2 watts so pretty much twice the power so I'm hoping for a good result Audio test, audio test on the Treble AS Treble AS just under 400 metres audio 1 2 1 2 1 2 audio Okay, I've walked on a bit, I've walked on about another 100 metres I reckon. So uh, we'll do another test, sort of, you know, just about the 500 metre mark or thereabouts. Audio test, one, two. Second audio test, approximately 500 metres from the UV5R. Audio, one, two, one, two. So, same test, that extra little bit of distance, about the 500 mark, metres that is, on the uh, Treble AS. Audio, audio test, Treble AS, audio test, about 500 metres from QTH, about 500 metres, one, two, one, two, audio. Right, going to do the third audio test now. I've had to walk quite a bit out get away, <laughs> to get away from people because I do look a little bit silly when I'm doing this. And uh, as you can see there, I'm right by the, uh, the bypass, the sort of dual carriageway. So I'm geographically pretty much at the same distance I was when I was up on that flyover okay. last time. Yeah, audio test three, audio test three on the Bofang T1. Just over the half mile point from the QTH. Audio, audio test three, one, two, three, four. And no one came back, <laughs> that's good. Okay, do, let's do the same test on the, uh, the Treble AS. Yeah, audio test three, audio test three on the Bofang T1. Just over the half mile point from the QTH. Audio, audio test three, one, two, three, four. Here it goes. Yeah, audio test three on the Treble AS now. The furthest distance, just over the half mile point from the uh, QTH in a built up area. So audio, audio one, two, testing, one, two, three, four, five, audio, audio, audio. Well, there we go. So I think it's time I uh, stop looking a bit silly out in the street 
and uh, head back, take a walk back and we'll see if any of that has uh, come out and see if this one can actually produce a better signal as I say with the extra long antenna and the power. Right. Yeah, audio test three on the triple AS now. The furthest distance just over the half mile point from the uh, QTH in a built up area. So audio audio one two testing one two three four five audio audio audio. So that's quite an interesting set of results and firstly I'd say that the T1 seemed to do better today than it did on the previous test. Now unfortunately I couldn't get up to the flyover today due to roadworks so I had to go a different route. Now on the second test I noticed that the T1 struggled and that was because I'd gone down a very very slight dip and was surrounded by condensed housing and in those conditions the treble AS seemed to have the upper hand. Otherwise, well, I think the Treble AS has just got a very slight better audio, but it certainly isn't much in it. So I think this really comes down to, you know, perhaps a lifestyle choice. Do you want the convenience and the stealth-like little T1 that you can sort of slip in your pocket? Or do you want the more versatility of the Treble AS where you perhaps can change the antenna and increase the range even further? Or maybe you just want to go all out and buy both radios because these radios are getting so cheap that currently you could buy both and have them delivered for less than 23 UK pounds. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be doing some more PMR testing radios in the future very soon. I want to test that little black and silver treble AS plus against the basic treble AS because the plus costs a few quid more and I just want to see if you get any more for your money but as for now going to bring this one to a close thank you very much for sticking with it thank you for watching please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe for those future videos and as always please take care look after yourselves and i'll catch you all on the next one